Hey guys, welcome to another movie review. Today I'm going to be talking about the new Damien Chazelle film, First Man. Um, Damien Chazelle is known for films like Whiplash and La La Land. Um, he's done a couple of other music-related projects, I believe, too. But La La Land and Whiplash are kind of his two big ones. Uh, so now it's his new film about Neil Armstrong landing on the moon, being the first man to walk on the moon here in the U.S. anyway. Um, and so, you know, as to be expected, I was really excited about this movie. Um, but for guys, for any of you guys who don't know about First Man is about, uh, first and foremost, this is a film about Neil Armstrong, and it's kind of about his journey of being chosen with NASA and um, b basically figuring out how to get to the moon and all the failures they had to go through in order to successfully land on the moon and, and bring an actual person there rather than just a, a robot of some kind. So this film kind of explores all these ideas. And one thing that kind of intrigued me about this film is the film also explores kind of Neil Armstrong's home life, things that were going on at home, in between all these big things he was doing with NASA and kind of doing the publicity stuff for, you know, taking questions with the press and what it's going to be like going to the moon and stuff like that. So uh, this film explores all different aspects of Neil Armstrong's life, rather it is his home life, rather it is going to the moon, rather it's just working with NASA, doing tests with NASA, uh, going to the White House, representing the U.S. and NASA at the same time. Uh, this film explores all these ideas, and it does it over the course of the film, First Man. So overall, guys, I thought this film was all right. Um, I thought this film does really well in some areas and really not so well in other areas, and I think that's ultimately where I kind of feel with First Man. That's kind of where ultimately what I feel about it. Um, there's things that it does really well, and there's things about it that it really doesn't do all that well. Uh, so let's go into those positives and negatives as to how I felt about First Man. Uh, so first and foremost for the positives, um, I thought the NASA tragedies that occurred were really interesting as far as all the failures we had to go through in order to successfully land on the moon and make it a successful mission and stuff. Uh, I really did not know there was so much stuff that NASA had to kind of sacrifice and go through and so many tragedies and so many human losses they had to go through in order to successfully um, send a group of people up to the moon and hope that it's a success, kind of just cross their fingers and hope that it'll work for that one time. Uh, there's just so many things that I did not know um, NASA had to do in order to successfully make this mission possible. Uh, so I thought that was very interesting in that regard of it's great that we made this thing a success, that we did make history with NASA and do all this really neat stuff, but we did have to go through a lot of sacrifices in order to get to that point. I also thought Claire Foy's performance as Neil Armstrong's wife was very good in this film. Uh, she has a lot of concerns that I think a lot of people in her position would feel. Uh, she always makes sure that Neil's kind of telling his children the truth, what he's going to be doing, where he's going, if he's going to the moon, how long it might be, if he doesn't make it back. How can you really tell a child how about that you know so the film kind of addresses those things um they go through something that i did not know neil armstrong had to grow through with one of his children that i won't spoil here but it is very tragic and the film does keep going back to it so it's something that it kind of to look for in the film as far as what neil armstrong's feeling as far as what he was possibly thinking about going to the moon and stuff like that so um overall but going back to claire foy's performance that's again very good very supportive as the wife has concerns that i think a lot of people in her position would feel um she's very close to a lot of the other wives of the astronauts of nasa so there's that going into it too so if they go through something very tragic she's kind of feeling it with them and kind of brings that into her own life as far as what she might do is if that ever happened to her and stuff like that. So just a very good performance. Wouldn't be surprised if she gets nominated for an Oscar for this movie. Maybe, maybe not win it, but hopefully gets nominated. Neil Armstrong's home life is explored in this film, and I think that's one of the more interesting aspects of the film is, because if you look at Neil Armstrong's Wikipedia page like I did after the movie, they really kind of don't touch on that very much. It's mostly... The page is about his time with NASA, what he did, landing on the moon, making history. They never really talked about what was going on at home with him and stuff like that. So that's one thing I, I thought was interesting about this film that maybe some others might be kind of not as interested in. But it was interesting to kind of see what it was like with his kids when him and his kids kind of had this separation. You know, he was focusing on work and really not... Just didn't want to talk to him about certain things. It, it, it's kind of a touchy subject for some of the things he had to go through. And 
um, you know, think the things with the wife and the things that happened with one of the kids that obviously there was a tragedy involved with. Um, so there's just a lot of things about his home life that I thought was interesting. And when the film explores it, for the most part, it's pretty interesting. I also like the historical significance of this event. One moment that's kind of cool in this film is when Neil comes back home as to be expected, like he did in, in real life. Um, it's not just kind of the U S that celebrates it. It really is kind of a neat thing that we did. And it's one of those things where they interview people in France, they interview people in England, they interview people that live in a country that this didn't even happen to them too. And they're just kind of like, you know, it's just kind of cool that we just kind of got to send somebody up there and they got to walk around and tell us what it's about. And, uh, you know, it was just kind of a cool thing. It's just kind of, cause I talked to my parents about this event before I saw this movie and they're like, yeah, I was very young, you know, cause my parents were born in the sixties and stuff. And like, you know, I remember it. I remember it being kind of a big deal. I remember it being late at night when this happened and stuff like that. Um, and they were telling me just kind of how interesting and unique it was to kind of have somebody go up there and jump around and kind of bring stuff back and be able to have stories for everybody of what it was like and everything. So um, I, I thought that part of the film was very interesting. I thought they handled that very well because it really is something that kind of impacted us forever and kind of impacted NASA forever too. And so I think the film does a good job showing how significant this event was. I also like the 1960s film grain and look of this film. It really does look like something that was probably made in the 60s or looks like something out of the 60s and they did a good job with all the sets, making sure all the clothes that the people were wearing looked like they came out of the 60s and so forth. Um, and like I said, there's kind of that film grain, so it kind of looks like the film was kind of made in 1960 in certain scenes and stuff like that. So I thought that part of the film was very interesting to look at. But for my negatives of this film, and like I said before, this is directed by Damien Chazelle, who did bring us Whiplash, who did bring us La La Land. And unfortunately, it's kind of a standard issue approach for this movie. It really felt like anybody kind of could have directed this movie, to be honest. I really just... Here you go, there's a movie There's a movie about a guy landing on the moon, and it happened, and it made history. He did it, and he came home, and that's about it. And I, I really just kind of had that kind of feeling to it. Just kind of like, oh, okay, here you go. You did all this stuff with NASA, he's now on the moon, he came back, and that's it. And it just kind of had that very typical approach. It really didn't feel like... I didn't feel like I was watching something from Damien Chazelle, to be honest. It really, because from a guy that gave us Whiplash and from a guy that gave us La La Land, La La Land was so energetic and so fun, and it was such an homage and in, in the spirit of golden age of Hollywood, and Whiplash was showing us how difficult music can be and how, you know, just all this hard stuff that that kid had to go through with, with his teacher and all, you know, just showing just how difficult it is to kind of stand out in the world and be the best musician you can be. And this film just kind of happened. It just kind of happened and it kind of took its time and it just didn't really have that Damien Chazelle feel to it. And I think that's one thing that kind of let me down is I just felt like anybody kind of just could have directed this movie. And then it goes on to my next point. There's way too many slow and dragging moments in this film. When you For a movie that's about a man going to the moon and making history... Unfortunately, on the scenes where he is making history, it feels just kind of slow and really not worth the payoff, and it just doesn't feel special. It just kind of is like he made it to the moon, and he's looking around for a while, and here's the recording for everybody to watch, and it's just like, okay, now we can go back to Earth now. It's just like, it just felt so slow and dragging, and it, it just... It, it, they need to show just how important this is. And like I said, for a film that has so many scenes where like it's people on TV talking about how much of a big deal this is, there's a, even a moment with JFK talking about it and stuff that was real JFK footage and so forth. It's, there's just so many scenes that are just so slow and drag for so long and really could have benefited from a better pacing. I also would have liked to have seen a psychological element for this movie. Um, a lot of people brought this up already. It's a film that really makes you feel kind of detached from Neil Armstrong. You really kind of don't, besides a couple of stuff with like the things going on with his family and so forth, there really isn't a lot of moments where you can really psychologically feel what Neil might be going through in certain scenes. Um, sure, I'm, I'm sure he was nervous when the launch was happening. I'm sure he was, he was sad when something bad happened to one of his kids. I'm sure... 
you know, he felt bad as a husband when he couldn't communicate properly with his wife on certain things. But, like, I, I need to know more. I, I need to know psychologically more. There needs to be that moment, I guess, where, like, maybe him and the wife sit down and be like, you know, honey, I'm so sorry for all this. I just, I, there's so much going on. I feel so conflicted with the press, and I want to be able to express kind of how frustrating this can be. And there's not that moment. What I just did a second ago, there's not a moment like that in this movie. It just kind of happens, and it just, I don't know. Uh, so I really feel like a psychological element really would have benefited this movie somehow. And also, I'm going to say this too, there really isn't enough spectacle in this movie. For a film that is about making history with going to the moon, it just kind of felt like another Apollo 13, and another Gravity, and another, any kind of film, like, I don't know, Space Cowboys, where, like, we just kind of go to space, and things happen, and it's a success and a failure, or just a success, or just a failure, and it just kind of felt like another space movie, and... I don't think Damien Chazelle wanted that feeling. I think he wanted something more significant out of this movie, and I think it should have felt that way, and unfortunately it doesn't. There's also a lot of scenes that really feel kind of repetitive in this film. There's just so many scenes where they fail, and then they go back to NASA, and then they fail again, and then they go back and they fail again. And are they? There's so many scenes where, where I don't know, where Neil Armstrong's at home and He's sad about something, and then they go over about it again, and he's sad about something else. And it's just like, I don't know. They, they, they really, the film would have benefited, I think, from more variety. There's just not enough variety here for something like this. So overall, I'm going to give set First Man a 7.5 out of 10. There's things that are good about it. There's things I like about it. But it's just a very standard issue. There's just too many slow and dragging moments to really make me feel proud about promoting this movie in any way. I think a psychological element would have benefited the movie. There really should have been more spectacle than what there was. And there's just so many scenes that feel really repetitive in this. So there's things I like about it. It's not a terrible film. It's just, there's just a lot of things about it that kind of frustrated me and I think could have been better, better. And for a film that's such a historical significance to something in our USA culture, it should have felt better and and could have been better as a result. So First Man, 7.5 out of 10. It's an okay Redbox rental, I think, so watch at your own caution.